Greetings, Ohio Valley. This is Dan Lima with OSU Extension from Belmont County. And this is Karen Cox from WVU Extension in Ohio County. Thanks for tuning in to Extension Calling, your source for research-based information for the farm, garden, and home. Before we get started today, I have something very important to talk about, and that is the COVID-19 vaccine. COVID-19 vaccines have been safely administered to hundreds of millions of Americans, including myself. COVID-19 vaccination greatly reduces the risk of severe illness, hospitalization, and even death. The nation's top medical and healthcare experts agree that COVID-19 vaccines are our strongest tool to help stop the pandemic. So learn more at vaccinate.wv.gov or call 1-833-793-0965. Again, that's 1-833-793-0965. And please, get vaccinated. Dan is away on military leave right now, so we're going to bring back some of our previous shows that didn't make it to the podcast. We hope that you enjoy them. As always, we welcome your feedback. If you'd like a written transcript of the show, please email me at karen, K-A-R-E-N, dot cox, C-O-X, at mail, M-A-I-L, dot W-V-U, dot E-D-U, or call 304 234 3673. Thanks again for listening. Haymaking is an art and it has a lot to do with not only the plant physiology side, but also the weather. Now, it's always good to remember that when we're talking about first, second, and third cuttings, usually the thir- second and third cuttings are going to be a little bit better quality than the first cutting. And that's just due to plant physiology, where as the plant matures and goes to reproductive stages, where you see the seed heads come up. Typically, the lignin goes up and a lot of the proteins and the sugars that the livestock can use for energy go down. And that kind of gets transitioned to fiber as it matures. But that typically happens early in the season. So as we go down or as we get to higher and higher cuttings, second, third, and maybe even fourth cuttings, uh, quality typically goes up. But let's not forget that as soon as you cut, the hay needs to dry a little bit before you, you bale it up. So... If you get the rain early on when the grass is still wet, there's not a huge loss there. But if the if the grass sits there for two or three days and then it rains on it and it brings that moisture level up as it's curing, that's where the problems occur typically. So it's always a really good idea. If you are buying hay, remember that a forage analysis will tell you a lot of good information and really help you out in terms of uh figuring out what you need for your cattle needs. So remember that good feeding throughout the winter time is really important, not only for the weight of the cattle that you're going to sell, but also for the possibility, one, of that calf being viable and to get that cow rebred after it calves in the spring. So if you start to see the body condition score of your cattle really go down, suspect that the hay quality is probably going to be low and that you might need to bump it up a little bit, um, give them some extra protein or possibly, you know, get that hay analyzed and uh, try to figure out what quality you're giving at livestock. And you might need to bump up with some supplemental feed, get that white that weight up for calving, because you want you want a cat or a cow that's about body condition score of five, six, or possibly even seven to calve and then be able to rebreed in good time, as opposed to having a really low body condition cow that's going to be really difficult to get rebred after she's calved. And also that calf weight's also going to go down accordingly. So it's kind of a double whammy if you let the body condition score deteriorate too fast. So when you do a forage analysis, some of the terms that you're going to run into are things like forage quality and under forage quality, things like dry matter, crude protein, adjusted crude protein, acid detergent fiber. It can get kind of technical in terms of uh, those terms. Uh, But we at the Extension Office, Karen, myself, all the surrounding counties from Belmont all have good ag educators that can help you out if you are listening somewhere else. But let's kind of go through some of these definitions with the forages and talk about what they mean for a forage analysis. So there's forage quality. And since uh, forages are predominantly used by livestock as a source of nutrition, uh, forage quality is, ter- is a term relating to the nutritional value of a forage when used by, by that livestock. 
So these values are going to be based on consumption and resulting in animal performance. So forage quality is going to be just a general term for how good that is. And that's going to be a ratio of fiber, of energy, of protein, and usually, and that kind of calculates into the relative feed value, which we'll talk about later. So dry matter now is a percentage of the forage that is not water. When you typically cut grass or, or if you have fresh grass that you're grazing, the moisture levels are typically about 80%, sometimes even higher. And uh, when you do dry hay down um, or buy hay that's, uh, that's been baled already, you're looking at a moisture content of about 10 to 15%. And that's going to be a real stable moisture content to make sure that that forage is preserved enough to be able to store and then winter feed your livestock because they can't go out and graze. So the dry matter then is the percentage of the forage that is not water. And again, if you're looking at a forage analysis, you're going to want anything from 10 to 15%. And if it's somewhere, if it's about 15%, just remember that for every percent that's going to, that it's going to drop from there, you're going to lose about 1% crude protein as well. So crude protein is the laboratory measurement of nitrogen content of the forge, and it's calculated using a formula of nitrogen times a coefficient of 6.25%. So plants need nitrogen to make proteins, okay? And those proteins are typically going to be translated into gains for livestock. So that's how that whole chain works. So we fertilize, we put nitrogen down on our grasses, the grasses are typically going to be higher quality. They're going to be bigger when the livestock eat the higher quality and large, larger amount of forage. They also intake that nitrogen that we supplied to the grass or the forages. And they, they utilize the protein that that grass transformed that nitrogen into. So the crude protein now is going to be how well that plant was able to utilize that nitrogen to make proteins for it to do things. And one of the most, one of the proteins that's mostly used in plants is something called Rubisco. And Rubisco is just an enzyme that will make photosynthesis. So what happens when you fertilize in general? Everything turns bright green. So that dark green color is, it's a rough indicator of the quality of the forest that you see as well. Um, it's not hundred percent, but uh, typically when you do fertilize, you do see a darker green, which can be translated into a higher protein level but you know don't don't let me confuse you too much because you cannot tell the quality of a hay by the color of of the hay bale so if it's nice and green or if it's a tinge of red or if it's just beige that doesn't tell you about the quality of that hay bale so don't let that fool you but crude protein then is the amount of proteins present in that hay um, and typically, if you want, if you are, if you want to increase the crude protein of your hay, you would have fertilized earlier in the season, and that's how that kind of translates through. But um, crude protein will include both the true protein and also the non-indicated uh, heat damage protein that may alter the protein availability. So there's something called the adjusted crude protein that people often overlook. And the adjusted crude protein is the amount of protein remaining for use after the animal has uh, subtracted the indigestible protein from that heat damage. So remember, as you're curing hay, heat is produced. And that heat can not only make you lose dry matter, but it also can make you lose protein as well. So when you're looking at, if you're looking at just crude protein, you could be fooled. So always look and see if there's an adjusted crude protein value. If not... Crude protein is still pretty accurate as long as that hay didn't have any excessive heating. Um, and then there's the acid detergent fiber. And the acid detergent fiber is an indicator of digestibility. Uh, the value refers to the cell wall portions of the forage that are made of cellulose and lignin. Now, um, lignin, I like to think of lignin as cement and think of cellulose as uh, rebar. Um, and it, it's like, uh, you take those sugar components and you put them in a very stable, uh, structure that gives, 
that gives the plant that turgid ability to kind of come up. So if you if you're looking at a grass field, let's say in June, maybe even June, July, let's say, and you see a lot of seed heads coming up and those seed heads are nice and rigid and they don't, you know, they they, they don't have much bend. Um, as the wind, if the wind blows, they just kind of, they all move together nice and rigid. That's lignin and that's really not digestible. So if you're, so that's why typically the first cutting isn't going to be as high quality because it has a lot more acid detergent fiber, which is those cellulose and lignin. So these values are going to be important because they reflect the, the ability of the animal to digest the forage. So the animal has to be able to get those proteins and get those sugars, even if it has the rumen and the rumen has the um, the ruminant bacteria that help break it down um, and it can do a lot more than we can. There is limitations in terms of that lignin itself. So that lignin is very hard to break down. And if that lignin content goes too high, then the fiber content is going to be really high and that animal is not going to be able to get one, all those proteins, and two, all those sugars that are going to be important for the animal growth or weight gain, depending on weight gain and growth actually is, are they're both important, uh, growth for the calf and weight gain for the cow. And as the ADF increases, the digestibility of the forage decreases um, along with energy because you're binding up those sugars. Now, there's also neutral detergent fiber, and this is the value of the total cell wall, which is comprised of the acid detergent fiber and the hemicellulose. And these values are going to be important in the ration formula because they're going to reflect the amount of forage that the animal can consume. So the ADF gives you the fiber content, but the NDF is going to be, it's going to limit how much of that forage the animal can then take. So um, one thing that these notes kind of remind me of is you know, we always use the 3% rule in terms of dry matter for an animal intake, right? So if you have a 1,000 pound cow, typically it's going to t- it's going to eat up like 30 pounds of food. Well, 30 pounds of good forage. If the forage is, if you have low quality forage, and we'll talk about some of those values, that can drop to as low as 1.5%. So now you're talking about an animal that can only consume 15 pounds, let's say, of a forage, and that forage will have 50% of the nutrient content of something better. So then it's easy to see how that animal then, if you think um, if you think your animals just aren't hungry and not eating and not gaining, uh, it could be that the forage is so low quality that they can't eat as much as they normally would and even the, the stuff that they are eating is going to be half as good. So that's almost a fourfold decrease in animal performance. So really important to, uh, to notice these things. And you know, these are some of the tools you can use to kind of figure out what's going on. So let's kind of keep going here. So that's neutral detergent fiber. And um, we'll, we'll go over some of the numbers to tell you what's good and what's bad. TDN is total digestible nutrients. That's going to be the sum of all the digestible organic nutrients, both protein and energy. So this is going to take into account the adjusted crude protein and the acid detergent fiber and neutral detergent fiber and tell you how much nutrients that um, <clears throat> that forage actually is. So a TDN is going to be, um, it's going to tell you the 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 forages that are available to the to the animal, and it's usually expressed as a percentage of dry matter. So you want to look at this percentage when determining the mixed grass hay quality. So if the TDN is really low, your forage quality is going to go down because that's taking into account both the energy and the protein and the fiber, and those are the three main components of <clears throat> quality when we talk about hay. Um, and then there's also the RFE, so the relative feed value. If you are, if you have horses, then you do see this uh, term quite a bit. And it's a ratio calculated by combining the, the digestibility and the potential intake of a forage into one number. Now, the RFE increases as the forage quality increases. And it's based on alfalfa. So full bloom alfalfa. So this is at the this is before it starts going into seed. So you're probably talking about 
peak maturity, peak vegetative maturity, right as it transitions into flowering. You're going to have 41% acid detergent fiber and 53% neutral detergent fiber. Um, and is estimated to have an RFE of 100. Um, so if you have, if you, so remember that as your, your, as the plant matures and grows, then you're going to have greater quality. So I'm sorry, as the plant matures and grows, the, the quality goes down, but the quantity increases. So you can get above 100, but 100, but this um, full bloom alfalfa is going to give you a good ratio of quality and quantity. But if you have, let's say, um, alfalfa that's pre bloom, where maybe, you know, let's say, let's say you, you get in there at an optimal time when 25% or less of the fields in bloom. So you have a lot of good vegetative alfalfa that's going to be at, the highest quality right there, right before it drops. Um, and, um, you can, you, so you can get up to 150 relative feed value and that's usually 150 is probably going to be the best. So the, the 100, the relative feed value of 100 is based on full bloom alfalfa and it can go lower if you pass full bloom and you can go higher if you go before that full bloom stage. But um, remember, the reason why they made the scale like this is because at full bloom, you're probably going to get the best bang for your buck. All right. So let's um, so now that we kind of know some of these terms, let's talk about uh, what what is um, what is good. Well, low, medium and good hay. All right. Um, and if we're just talking about grass hay, so forage quality quantifications uh, for grass hay, mixed grasses. Um, if you have a crude protein, so in this in this schematic that I'm looking at, it doesn't give you the adjusted crude protein. It just gives you the crude protein, which again, if you don't suspect anything in terms of uh, the preparation for the hay in terms of difficulties, uh, whether it rained, whether it was baled too wet, whether it heated up too much, things like that. Um, you're going to really want to look at adjusted crude protein. But let's just say, you know, you had really good luck in baling hay and uh, you did things and there was no real complications. So let's just assume that's the case and you're looking at analysis that doesn't give you adjusted crude protein. Um, so in this case, a low quality hay would have 5% or lower crude protein. Crude protein. Um, a medium hay is looking at 9% and good, 12% and up. Um, and remember that you're going to have different livestock needs at different times. So, um, right. Um, so remember that right before calving and during lactation, you're going to make, you want to make sure your cows are getting good. hay. um, if you suspect that, uh, your cows are really losing weight in the winter time and by spring, they're going to calve at a low, uh, a low body condition score. You might want to really invest in some good hay to make sure that cow one drops a nice healthy cow and is able to good, make produce enough milk to sustain that calf and have that calf gain some weight real quick. Also, that's really important because again, that body condition score of five, six, or seven is going to be really essential in making sure that you can rebreed that cow early in the spring. Um, so, all right, so let's look at TDN now, which is total digestible nutrients. And that's going to be, remember, that's a good indicator of ad adjusted crude protein, fiber, and energy. Uh, so 45% is low, 50% is medium, and 55% and up is good. What you'll notice is that you can't have a TDN that's really good if your proteins are going to be low. Um, so it, the TDN just gives you more information on energy. Some people will strictly go on proteins alone, but... The more information you have, the better off you are. Um, and so what, what I was referring to earlier about the neutral detergent fiber and that being a determinant of how much that cow can intake um, is, uh, is like this. So if you have a low quality hay of 5% with a TDN of 45%, that cow is not going to eat 1% to 3%. It's going to eat 1.75%. Medium, 2%, good, 
two and a half to three percent even. Um, and that's and that's how you want to kind of gauge. Um, that's a, again, that's another good tool you can use to make sure that uh, your cows are having that other than body condition score, which is the best indicator that there is, how much they're eating of the hay that you're giving them is also an indicator of the quality of hay that you're giving them. So you have several ways to, to start figuring out whether you should um, change hay, maybe supplemental feed, maybe get it analyzed and try to figure things out. <laughs> but with the low quality hay versus a good quality hay, you can easily have a one one to two percent differential in terms of intake of that livestock. Um, when you're looking at pounds of crude protein, if you have good, if you have a crude protein percentage of twelve percent, you're probably feeding about three point two five or three and a half pounds of protein. Um, so let's say you want to get up. So if you have medium hay, uh, but you have livestock that are really necessitating that higher quality forage, what you could do is you could actually feed some grains and bump that. So if you have a 9% crude protein, 50% TDN, so you're feeding roughly about two pounds of protein just in that forage alone, you know, you could throw in another pound or two of uh, supplemental feed and get that protein back up too. So there's several tools you can use and there's several different tricks you can use to make sure that you're feeding uh, your livestock at the proper nutritional demand of its, um, of its development. Um, and uh, just, just keep these things in mind when you are looking at your body condition score, when you're trying to figure out why your animal's not eating as much as it should, and also at the time of calving to make sure that that animal's in good condition to calve and then get rebred. Because let's not forget that a cow that is not producing a calf is a is basically money that uh, is not paying you back. So it's um, so your livestock's going to be an investment, and if that cow doesn't calve, you're not getting any. You're not getting paid from your investment. So it's just a bad, it's a bad deal. Um, so always keep track of how much they're eating, what they're eating. And, and also if, if everything, you know, if you are keeping track of all this stuff and there's just certain cows that are just not rebreeding, right? Well, those are probably not the cows that you want to keep in your farm. And what you've done essentially is you've eliminated the possibility of feed being the issue of that cow not getting rebred. Uh, so that, so there's just so much to, to gain from utilizing a forge analysis, um, understanding the way the, the physiology of making higher quality forages and then how animals will react to the different quality of forages. And remember that the higher the quality, the more they're going to eat. So you're going to see an immense difference when you go from low quality to high quality, not only in how much they're intaking, but in how much that forage is actually making them gain and uh, providing you with a lot better investment and a lot higher return from all the inputs that you've given that livestock. So uh, we are about out of time right now. I do want to thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, you can call me. Um, and I'm back from my deployment and in the office and up and running. <laughs> So uh, just give me a call at the Belmont County office at 740-695-1455. COVID-19 vaccines were given to tens of thousands of people in early clinical trials and to hundreds of millions of Americans since. Top health experts agree that COVID-19 vaccines are safe, effective, and trusted. Visit vaccinate.wv.gov or contact your local health department. Thanks for listening to Extension Calling. This show is a collaboration between OSU Belmont County Extension Educator Dan Lima and WVU Ohio County Extension Agent Karen Cox. If you'd like a transcript of this show, contact us at the office. Also, let us know if you enjoy the show by ranking us on your podcast app.